So you're thinking about raising a backyard flock, just like this right here. But somebody in the house is a pretty tough sell. If you guys know anybody that's a tough sell, share this video. This is gonna be a pretty cool educational video about having and keeping backyard chickens. So come along on the Stony Ridge Farm. I'm Josh and we're gonna teach you everything you need to know about raising backyard chicken. Welcome to the Stony Ridge Farm. It's a beautiful day every day here on the Stony Ridge. This is my backyard flock, okay? So this is my flock of chickens. There are eight laying hens in here. There are various varieties. What I did was order from Murray McMurray Hatchery and I ordered the brown egg layer mix because I like brown eggs. There's really no difference in the flavor of brown eggs. There's your first educational moment. A brown egg's the same as a white egg. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna talk about chicken breeds. We're gonna talk about whether you live in town, whether you live in the country, the thought processes that you need to have when you're keeping backyard chickens. Now our chickens are right next to our garden. There's a reason because the manure from the chickens goes into the compost pile right here. And I've got a pretty significantly sized garden back here. And that's enough really to feed a family of four for sure. Now, right beside the garden, we've got the honeybees. There'll be more of that. So jump in, subscribe to the channel. And we'll teach you a little bit more about honeybees. We're on a 150 acre first generation farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And we got some cows down there too. It's a good time. So let's talk a little bit about this backyard flock and what you guys need to look forward to if you're deciding you're gonna raise your own chickens in your backyard. Now you may live in a municipality where this might be illegal. Check into your local municipalities. Have I had chickens when I lived in the city? Yes, was it legal? No, it wasn't legal. I wasn't supposed to have chickens, but I had them anyway and the neighborhood loved it. I sold eggs and it supported my chicken habit. So without further ado, we're gonna walk you around the coop and we're gonna talk about these chickens. All right, folks, this is my little backyard flock. And despite the fact that I live on a large piece of property, I live on 150 acres, I still call these my backyard chickens. They're actually in my front yard. They help support the garden right over here. They scratch through the garden after it's all done. And they also help support my egg habit and provide fertilizer for my yard at times. Now the only modification I've really made to this coop since I bought it is this chicken guard automatic chicken coop door opener. You can see it closing right now. It's been on there for about two years and I built this coop somewhere in the neighborhood of six years ago. This is just about right to house eight chickens. I have had as many as 12 chickens in here and it's done just fine. However, I was overrun with eggs so I ended up giving away some of those chickens to folks that could use them. So this is an eight by eight run out here. So in other words, eight by eight, it's sitting on four by fours, pressure treated four by fours. That's what's touching the ground. And then I built a frame, an eight by eight frame. This is four feet tall. Okay. If I had to do it again, I'd probably build it a full eight feet tall so that I could get in there up a little higher and I could shovel this out and clean it out just a little bit easier. There are a whole lot of thought processes at work here. There are solar lights all around the coop right here. That's to help deter predators. You can see a solar light there. This is a motion activated solar light. That's a solar light. They're all over the coop and that helps me to keep predators away because you're not really fencing in chickens as much as you're fencing out predators. These guys are cute, aren't they? Very cool. So the water that I have in here, and you can see what chickens can destroy, they will destroy. They've already kicked up a bunch of uh, <laughs> this new straw that I put in into the water, and that's okay. You gotta clean the water about once a week, kind of a Saturday or Sunday chore. Chickens are chicken, they're scared of you. So you see how they run away from me every time I get close to them. That's perfectly normal, guys. Um, this is a latch mechanism that I use on my chicken coop, and I also have that latch mechanism right there in case we make a boo-boo. We always close each one of these latches. This is a swarm trap for my honeybees. That's honeybee jail. Now, over here on the outside of the coop, this is the coop slash sleeping area, and we call that the run. This is where the birds sleep and they eat, okay? We'll open this guy up, same latch mechanism. Also put some bolts on here too. This latch works the best. This is like a gate latch. You can get it for like four bucks at your local home improvement store. So inside here are the nesting boxes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nesting boxes right here. And right here's our hanging feeder, okay? This feeder is hanging by a little hook and a chain. And the reason it's hanging is because if it's close to the ground, the chickens will do this. 
okay? They'll take their foot and they'll peck that stuff out and they'll waste it. I use pellets, okay? Layer pellets. And those, that's just the Do More Tractor Supply brand that I use right there. Works pretty good. This coop is a four by eight, meaning it's based on a four foot by eight foot pressure treated piece of plywood. And that's what the floor is. You can see right here, I've got it designed where I can slide a wheelbarrow up underneath here. I slide this board out and then I can rake all my manure and all my goodies into the wheelbarrow and put them into the garden. Very cool, almost automated. Now, if we come out here, I built a nesting box and I do not have plans for this guys. You're gonna have to use your imagination and build this coop on your own, okay? So we've got four four by fours right here that hold the coop up. It's open to air. I live here in North Carolina. This is open to air. It helps it breathe. It helps to get rid of dust and it's good for the chickens. Awesome. I only have to button this up in the very, very cold part of the winter. And when I do that, I'll just wrap it in plastic, clear plastic. Okay, we'll open up to our eggs. This is our egg bin. You can see I put these little latches on here that will help hold it up so that I don't have to hold it up the whole time. There's also a light right here in case we're getting eggs up after dark. Very, very cool. And I did have a little hydraulic cylinder on here that came out of my car, but uh, that has since gone by the wayside. It just fell apart, kind of. So if you look down in here, you'll see the eggs. Here's what you need to know about eggs. The chickens are gonna try and lay these eggs and they're gonna have poop on them sometimes. That's just normal. They're gonna try and lay all their eggs in one of these <laughs> laying boxes. And I've dispersed the eggs just a little bit and I just repacked everything. You wanna keep good fresh straw and or sawdust and shavings. Straw in the nesting boxes, sawdust and shavings in the coop and in the run is what I use most of the time. But for today's video, I went ahead and just put straw in there. Chickens will peck through it, get all the seeds out and they'll utilize it a whole lot. So. What you need, if you've got all your chickens are laying into one box, you want to get some fake eggs. I'll post links to these guys using golf balls or just a ceramic egg. It's not a real egg. I put an X on it because it's so realistic looking that I pick it up and I take it home sometimes and I'll end up washing it off and I'm like, oh man, that's got an X on it. <laughs> all right, we'll close this guy down. And that's just how easy it is to access the eggs. And we also have a latch here in case raccoons decide they wanna come in. We'll just latch it right there. So folks, that's my little backyard flock. That's the coop design. That's everything you need to know about raising a backyard flock. Now, if you live in town, let's talk about this. If you live in the city, you don't want a rooster, okay? I don't have a rooster out here and let's get rid of that rumor that you need a rooster for your chickens to lay. You don't need a rooster for your chickens to lay. You do need a rooster for the eggs to be fertilized. If you're a woman, do you need a man for yourself to ovulate? No, you don't. Just the same as a chicken and a chicken just keeps producing egg after egg after egg. So I get somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four dozen eggs a week out of these chickens. I share them or I sell them to the neighbors. It's just a fun thing to do and a rewarding thing to have. I never ever run out of eggs and everybody always appreciates it when you come visit their house and give them a fresh dozen eggs right off your farm. Now I feed the layer pellets, okay? And I don't feed any kind of special feed. You can feed an organic feed if you would like to do that. The layer pellets are better than the crumbles because they don't waste as much. They don't rake as much off in the floor and waste it. And it's all about dollars spent versus dollars returned. Now, if you're buying eggs for six bucks a dozen at the grocery store that are organic and you wanna feed your birds organic chicken feed, then go for it for sure. I think this is an awesome design. There is no smell, there's no stink. The nastiest thing again that you'll have to deal with is washing the eggs and cleaning the coop. The longer you wait, the nastier the coop will be. If it's raining outside, the dirtier the eggs will be. It's just that simple, guys. There'll be links at the end of this video in case you guys decide you wanna raise meat birds. I've got tons of content out there and I've got a everything chickens playlist that I think you guys will really appreciate. So. I'll post links at the end of this video to what you do when you get your chickens from the hatchery, everything you need to know about raising your own flock in your backyard so that you can be successful raising chickens. It's not nasty, it's not messy, it's rewarding, it's fun, they're cute. And if you decide you don't want them, you can always get rid of them because people are always out there wanting chickens. Don't get white leghorns if you live in town because they are really loud. So the best thing to do is research your breeds and find the best breed for you. These are not pets. As you can tell, they run away from you and chickens will do that because they're chicken. 
<laughs> That's what they do, man. They're not cuddly pets. They do carry salmonella. So if you're handling a chicken, you want to be sure and wash your hands and don't get that thing near your nose or your mouth because you can run a risk of getting salmonella poison. We don't want you to get sick from your chickens. We want you to be happy and have happy chickens. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. Just thought I'd do a little chicken talk. For those of you who are trying to convince a significant other that we should get backyard chickens, well, now you know. It's pretty easy and it's fun. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your